back today again with another video, this time about equipment. It's been a whole video since I talked about equipment. So what's this one about? It's a trial by fire. I forgot the lighter, that's my bad. <clears throat> of my screw bell setup on my base. Hey, look at this. This is not my screw bell. I'm back, I'm not traveling for like two weeks. So I decided to put this back on and see what it's like. And I thought I'd give you guys a report on what I think of only using my screw bell for the last however many months it's been, five, something like that, four or five months. Um, I've lived, I put this on like twice um, for like maybe 10 minutes total on that whole time. Uh, and I don't even know why I did that. I just kind of was like, ooh, I wonder what it looks like. Um, so let's talk about the screw bell. I have part of it right here. It's unscrewed right now. Um, so I basically, I got this bell for free um, because I got a 50B um, for 500 bucks. And the 50B was pretty beat up. Um, I kind of liked it, but uh, I didn't really need it. So I decided that the bell would be best served as my screw bell because um, it was not in very good shape. Um, it wasn't in horrible shape, but it was not in great shape. And the rest of the instrument, I just didn't really need. Um, the slide was, you know, pretty beat up. The valve section was pretty leaky. Um, I just didn't really need any of it. So I sold all that stuff for more than 500 bucks. And so the bell ended up being completely free. Um, and so I took this to John Sandhagen, had him saw it off, and I ended up with a screw bell. And it's a 50B bell, so it's at least somewhat similar to my corporation bell that I have on my base now. Um, it is not the same. This bell is heavier. It started out heavier than that bell is right now. Um, so that's one point of data that we should remember. Um, and I had it put on and then since I knew I was going to be going to Dutch Bass Drum Open in September and then this in December, I was like, I may as well get used to it and just use it all the time. Um, I basically got this because when you travel to Europe, um, they're very, very picky about what you can take on the airplane. Um, some airlines are anyway, not all of them. Um, some of them are very, very picky and they literally state, um, you cannot bring an instrument on board unless it is a violin or a guitar. Because both of those are more fragile than trombones um, and some of them are worth way more than trombones. So, you know, they just don't want the bad press and, you know, sometimes those fit in overheads. Whereas trombones, you know, they, they, they just don't cost that much, maybe $10,000 maximum for an airline that's not a big deal. Um, and they're not quite as fragile, you know, people are used to checking them, etc. So they just don't let trombones on the plane at all. And so to avoid that, I was like, hey, why don't I get a screwball case? Because basically with a trombone, you always want to take it on the plane. Um, checking it is always a last resort, unless you have like a tank style case or you put it in a golf case or something. So I got the screwbell, I got the tiny screwbell case for it. You guys have seen this before. And I ended up having this tiny setup that I can travel anywhere, never have to worry about it fitting in an overhead. Um, we flew a smaller plane from Dusseldorf to Paris and this fit in the overhead, no problem. You know, people go, oh, nice, nice violin or whatever. I actually got asked on my first flight to um, Europe um, for the Dutch Bass Drum and Open, hey, is that a violin or a guitar? Because this is the airline, it was very picky. And I went, oh, it's a violin. And they go, oh, all right, take it on the plane. If I had had a trombone, even in my small Marcus Bonnet case, I would have probably run into a problem. And would have been, it would have been probably okay being checked, but I'd rather not risk it. I'd rather just have a horn with me the whole time. Um, I've also lost my instrument in luggage before. I've had it um, checked without me wanting it to get checked, and then it disappeared, and I had to wait like five days to get it back. And I really don't want to have to deal with that either. I just want to have my horn there, and I can just play it anytime I want in, in the airport or whatever. Um, and the screw belt really gives me that option. So for travel, amazing. This is the only setup I would ever use for travel in the future. Um, I'm actually traveling again over New Year's Eve, not for a gig or anything, but I want to take my instrument with me. I'm probably not going to take my bass just because I don't really need to. <coughs> but if I was, I would probably switch back to the screw belt just for that. It's just make it would make it so much easier to travel with. Um, so 
not talking about playing things yet, just talking about um, you know the ease and stuff like that. How is this? Well, you know, how is dealing with this on a daily basis? Honestly, having a screw belt is pretty annoying. You always have at least one extra step compared to every other trombone player getting out their horn. You have to get out your stuff in the right order so that you put the flare on and then you get out the slide and put it all together. Um, usually I get out my slide, I put my mouthpiece and my grip on it, and then I put on the bell and I'm done. But with this, I have all these extra steps. For me, I have to put on my, uh, my D slide every time. I have two extenders that I have to take out to fit in the case. It's just, it's not a hassle, but it's approaching a hassle. It's just like, I just want to get my horn out. And every time you put it away, the same thing. You have to unscrew the thing and take out the extenders and put it all back away and make sure it's all strapped in. And that's just, it's just that much annoying. Um, even in the like three times I've gotten my horn out of its case since I came back, I'm like, oh, there's only two parts. And I put my mouthpiece in and I'm good to go. It's so much easier. So that is definitely a downside. Um, if you don't lube the, the threads, um, they'll squeak really loudly. I don't know if you've heard a French horn player do that, um, but that's pretty easy. You just put a little bit of heavy grease on here and then it's really quiet. Uh, it's actually easier to put together. <clears throat> so that's not a huge downside. Now playing wise, what did I notice? I played this horn only for the last four or five months or whatever. So one thing is this is definitely heavier by a pretty good amount. This bell started out heavier. Um, I never played it without a screw bell, so I don't really know how much heavier it is than that bell. But it is a thicker gauge just by a little bit. And playing it, um, it is definitely a heavier instrument. Um, I got used to it. I got, a much, I got to be a much better player in the time that I had this on. So I became a much more relaxed player. And it honestly wasn't a huge problem for me. Um, I would play lots of other bass trombones and go, wow, this instrument's way lighter than my trombone. But I never really ran into a problem where I thought this was too heavy. Um, maybe I would if I had done a bunch of solo recitals or something. I don't know. Um, that wasn't a huge problem for me. It's just kind of nice coming back to this and going, wow, that's really light. Um, otherwise, playing, I think this horn holds up better at high dynamics with this mm -hmm. bell on. Um, some ranges became a little bit easier. The range, like just in and below the staff, became easier to just really nail to the wall. I can play the loudest low E flats on the planet with this setup. Um, some ranges became harder. The high range became just a little more diffuse, a little harder to center. The entire horn became a little less flexible, not inflexible. Um, the partials didn't just jump super far away from each other, but I really had to work at keeping up my flexibility. Um, and probably the biggest downside, and I got this in the master classes in Germany, is that it covers up my articulation, maybe a little too much. I have to put a lot of energy into the horn to make an accent or a staccato or something on the other side of the bell obvious. Um, and I got that comment a few times, like, are you holding back on your articulations? They all sound the same, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, it's something I can practice, definitely, but that's something the bell is definitely doing to me, and that's, I would say, a downside. Um, I, I don't know if I've run into the same problem with this, but I feel like this just responds a little better, it's faster, it's more flexible, and so I don't get the same kind of, um, you sound like you're covered um, comments. And because it is heavier, it does take more energy um, to really light up. I got some comments about playing louder and stuff like that, and I was like, I feel like I'm playing pretty loud, but the, the feeling I had, the energy I was putting in was not what was coming out of the other side of the horn. So, is it perfect? By no means. Do I really like it? I do. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep using this exact screw bell. I might sell this one. I might cut this. I don't know. I might get a Shires, something like that. I have no idea. Um, I do want a screw bell that I can just use all the time, and that'll be my only bell. I think this cannot be my only bell and that kind of does make me sad. But for the two trips that I took, um, it was exactly the right choice. See you guys next time.